At the beginning of October, players and staff at Wickham Wanderers travelled to Arras, France, to follow in the footsteps of the 17th Battalion Middlesex Regiment, better known as the Footballers' Battalion, who served in the First World War. Following the outbreak of the Great War in 1914, local and national newspapers began to challenge the continuation of football during a time of national crisis. Professional players were under scrutiny by the press for prioritising their own self-interests of playing matches rather than fighting on the front line. As a result, in December 1914, a meeting was held and the idea of a footballer's battalion was raised and put into action, enlisting 35 professional footballers straight away. From there, 300 more footballers put their name forward, alongside numerous amateur players, officials and fans eager to serve alongside their favourite players. Our players visited significant landmarks and learnt about fatal battles, whilst paying their respects to those who gave their today to give us our tomorrow. That's off Finney Ridge. So that's when the Middlesex came here. Quite a lively sector. Now when they were here... Off to south, but behind us was the French lines and the British lines when they arrived, and over there was the German. Gold, about a signal reply, with about five matches. So I just want to read you what one of the footballers wrote. Well, there'll be lots of emotions, I'm sure, but you know, it'll be really an understanding of football's role in the First World War. And some of the England internationals and players of the day actually joined the footballers' battalions and fought alongside some of the supporters from their football clubs. And uh, so it'll be a really um, knowledgeable, they'll be knowledgeable, it'll be, they'll obviously have a good understanding of uh, how, what went on. Pretty humbling, Jace. Very. I've seen three aged 19s on this right. I was looking forward to it. I wasn't really sure how it's going to feel. Um, sort of tried to come with an open mind, really. Um, obviously, this is the first one, isn't it? So, but yeah. Good to get into the army because you had to be 16. And you had 14, 15 year olds that apply just so they could. And then the Second World War changed a little bit, it was a little bit more, um, you know, you have the other tanks. Yes, because these were the Folks, are Vokes on the tombstones here? Yeah? I know mate, I know, and S Vokes as well. Um, quite nice to see actually, quite nice to find. This is what is called a memorial to the missing because it was decreed at the First World after the First World War that every soldier would be commemorated whether they found his body or they didn't, okay? I'll talk about uh, <coughs> the cemetery in a minute. This is what we call a memorial to the missing. You'll see a bigger one tomorrow. And we're just talking, um, it relates to the Battle of Arras, 1916-1917. On the walls here are the names of 35,000 men that are missing in this area. I was looking at the minute anyway. I've lost it now, do you? More fumbling on there. Whereabouts? Oh, yeah.
On day two, the team were up at the crack of dawn on an eerie autumn morning to put themselves in the shoes of the soldiers who were victims of one of the deadliest battles of not only the Great War, but in British military history, the Battle of the Somme. It was the worst day in the history of the British Army. 60,000 casualties. Nearly 20,000 dead. Most between 7.30 and 7.45. All in there in that Norman zone. And the, the size of the hole, that one particularly big one, it's just, it's just crazy to see it. Do you know what I mean? Things like the stick. You got like that Slap. Shot. Jasper's on hip hop. Crescent. What the film? What a plug? What a plug? Give us some grass. 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 Give the ridge at the top, obviously, with the Germans that were fighting on the other side, it's quite insightful to see. Um, and now we're, we're at a grave site. We saw quite a few yesterday where, where there was 40,000 odd people. Uh, very good. to be honest. flag at the top and a French flag to signify that and on the opposite side you've got three British you know, I, I love coming out here and paying my respects one of my ex teammates Phil Stant obviously who'd, an ex soldier and, and fought in, for his country and, and, um, and I think it's, it's a real good development place you know for the boys to realise um, one we can't forget these people can't forget what was sacrificed in, the, in both world wars, but especially the Great War, the First World War, you know, and uh, you know, a feeling of uh, togetherness and humility that we, we love, we can, you know, we love the culture that we've got. Um, I think some of the stories we've spoke about the footballers' battalion, we focused a lot on the footballers who signed up from the various teams and and um, and the stories that they have. You know, the ultimate sacrifice for many of them. Yeah, boys. Yeah. Bear in mind also that with the exception of one tree, not a single one of these trees was here in the wall wood just ceased to exist. I'm gonna try to pick it up the wood. That's yeah. this. It's quite, you can't believe it's the same place, can you? It's same chaos. It's like now, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like it's beautiful. We're in the Delver Wood here. Um, and everything was destroyed by one tree, which is the one behind me here. And now to see something beautiful come out of something so terrible, it's, it's something quite, quite strange, a bit spooky about it, but the whole experience has been amazing. Um, and kind of a bit breathtaking at times, it's tough to take in, but no, I really, really enjoyed it. It's been a great couple of days.
going back to this morning, this this memorial sort of started from Archie Strike and Phil spent finding out about it as well and getting in touch and then Phil did an amazing campaign to raising the funds for fans. George Buchanan. George Buchanan with Harry Gates and BC Hooper formed one of the best half-back lines Wickham Wanderers ever had. The late Private Buchanan was the most, the most generous, gentlemanly player. He was clean and reliable on the field, clean in his tactics and a sportsman through and through. It shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them.